Giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up. All right, so I just got in with my run. I only did 5.7. I wanted to push for seven miles uh, doing this workout, but my nutrition wasn't where it was last night. It's getting really hot here in South Beach, but the shoes feel amazing. Now, this is the first Hoka One Ones that I've ever owned, and these are the Carbon Xs. I was looking at the Rincons, which were highly recommended at a much less price point of $115. These are at 180, but me being the tech head, I had to check out and see if the Carbon Xs were all that they're cracked up to be and all that Hoka was claiming in their patent. This bad boy. So I'm gonna get some supplements in me. I'm gonna finish up my workout, get cleaned up, and we're gonna talk about this. See y'all in a bit. All right, let's get into it. First of all, I just wanna say my name's Wes. If, for those of you who don't know me, so new to the channel, I have a degree in biochemistry. I went to law school focused on intellectual property, and right now I have a major interest in reviewing businesses and products. Kind of a, like a tech review channel, but more for outdoor activities, physical fitness, and of that ilk. So if at the end of this you like the video, please would appreciate uh, hit that subscribe button, like, and comment, uh, and I'll try to interact. So let's get into it. Today's video is going to be about not only specifically this shoe, which is the Hoka One One Carbon X, but Hoka One One in general. Uh, for those who aren't into the running scene, you may not know about them. They have actually haven't been around that long. They were founded in 2009 by a couple of ex-Solomon employees. And if you don't know Solomon, at, the, at least at the time, they're very well known for just minimalist shoes. And these two employees wanted to go off and do their own thing and develop what they called maximalist shoes. I mean, if you look at just this shoe, which is like all of their shoes, this is a thick boy. I mean, the sole of it from front to back is outrageous. But I mean, only after four years, a company came along, Decker's Outdoor Corporation, and bought them up. Not only did they buy them up in 2013, but they moved the headquarters to Galetta, California, where they are right now. Decker's Corporation owns other companies like Teva and Ugg Boots, but I've been very, very interested in Hoka, just seeing through different platforms, mostly YouTube with people getting into running, and really wanted to check out the shoes for myself. So as a side note, in 2020, I had decided that I was going to stay away from the big brands like Adidas and Nike, not because of their quality or any like ill will towards them. It's just that there's so many brands out there. In fact, I have a lot of admiration for Nike. One of my favorite books I've ever read is Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. If you haven't read it, check it out. And it's just insane of all the stuff he went through to get the Nike brand where it is today. But I do like venturing out and seeing all the different brands out there instead of staying in these more mainstream lanes. I mean, for example, if we want to compare Hoka to Nike, let's just look at the shoe division and what Nike reported in 2019 in quarter four. And it was $6.5 billion in their shoe division. And you can compare that to the 67 million that Hoka reported in their earnings of Q4. I mean, Hoka made only 1% of what Nike made for the entire year. It's just amazing that they can even compete in that market with all the money that Nike can dedicate to the R&D. For example, this Hoka Carbon X with the carbon plate through the middle is a competitor of the Nike Next Percent Vaporfly which retails at $250 versus this at 180. So what is it about Hoka's that make them unique in the market? Well, if I lift the tongue here, it references a US patent number 8881427. Pretty much what the patent's describing is the sole shape. It's talking about the different thickness of the front and the rear of the sole and then a uniform midsole here. But not only that, if you look at this shoe and compare it to the Brooks Ghost that I just got done running the hell out of, I mean, if, if I looked at both of them from far away, I would think that the Hoka weighs significantly more. And that's not the case. The, the, the Carbon X is around nine something ounces, whereas the Brooks Ghost is over 12 ounces. You would think that three ounce difference isn't 
that big a deal. But as you're pounding the pavement and you're putting on the miles, it sure as hell does. Now, uh, this inventive concept for what hokas are is attributed to their whole shoe line. I think the most popular one right now is their, their Hoka Rincon. And that was a close competitor to what I was going to get versus the Carbon X. But I was very interested in the performance of the Carbon Plate and saw some excellent reviews. I can put some of the links to the reviews down below. No, what I wanted to do was get what they considered their top of the line shoe. And again, a competitor to the Nike Next Percentage, which was used to set the world record in the marathon. What I noticed right off the bat was that, first of all, like I said earlier, this shoe is super light. Like I can't believe how light it is and how amazing it feels on my foot, even with the carbon plate in the middle. The next thing I noticed was a very easy stride. As I was moving forward and running, it just seemed effortless. Now, I could attribute it to going from a very beaten up shoe, because when you put on new running shoes, it just feels amazing, or I could attribute it to the actual carbon plate. I think it's a little of both, and I am going to believe in the carbon plate technology because a lot of people are doing it. They're not doing it for no reason or gimmicky. I mean, it's been proven that it actually works. And if I can reduce any pain or any stress on my knees, because I don't have the greatest knees from playing collegiate baseball as a catcher, and one of the reasons I had to quit is because I blew them both out, I'm going to take it. I'll spend the extra money to get something that makes me more comfortable. You literally get what you pay for. Now, one thing that kind of bothers me is, so I go on the Hoka website and I see carbon fiber plate and in parentheses, patent pending. I looked and I couldn't find anything specific to a carbon plate that Hoka is currently prosecuting at the USPTO. And I find that hard to believe that they would have anything just because of what the market looks like for all these shoes coming out with carbon plates. I don't know what the inventive concept would be. I believe it'd only be additional, which is why I believe I did find the correct patent application, which is more about a stabilizing profile on the shoe. So if I look at the top of the shoe, from what I could tell in the protruding sole at the bottom is all about the stability of the shoe. Because then they later on mentioned that there is a plate, what was the exact language? Okay, here, yeah, so, in an embodiment of the present footwear or shoe, a semi-rigid support plate, such as a carbon plate. So, I'm assuming that's what they mean when they're saying patent pending, because I can't imagine that they were the ones when they filed this, and I think the prosecution started in 2018, to think about putting a carbon plate in the shoe. Uh, that kind of technology, I think, has been around for quite some time. So from what I can tell, it's generally just an improvement upon the shoe that they already have a patent on. And also, the stability plate is not something that is claimed in their first independent claim. It's only in a dependent claim, which is dependent on the independent claim, if that makes any sense. So if the patent examiner takes a look at the independent claim and sees that, no, there's no novel inventive concept here, then all of the other claims get rejected. But I mean, all in all, like I'm, I'm super thrilled with this shoe. Now, I don't know about the $180 price point. That seems to be a sticking point for a lot of people with this shoe. It is amazing. Um, I think the price point is generally driven by the market for these types of shoes. So if I look at, let's see. So, I mean, you have the Brooks Hyperion Elite, which is $250. You have the Nike Next Percentages, which I've said multiple times, which is $250. But anyway, I think that the, the price for the Hoka is probably driven by the market. There are other competitors. I mean, this one seems to be a up and coming top competitor for the Nike Next Percentage. Again, I am 100% thrilled with this shoe. Uh, looking forward to putting more and more miles on it. I would like to get their Rincon, something without the carbon plate. That one, I believe, is a couple less ounces per shoe. And I did try it on at the store. I held, did 
uh, comparison running around. I just like the stiffness of this shoe. I would, I'm a bigger guy, I would say. Like I'm cutting right now. I usually walk around 200 pounds and the stiffness of the shoe is just great. Now, one thing I, just in case I haven't mentioned it at this point, when I sprinted the shoe, and I'm going to show some film here that you just completely apologize for the poor form. Uh, according to my Nike watch, I hit about 21 miles per hour during this run. But this is when I really, really felt the carbon plate just giving me some spring. I don't know how much spring it actually gave me because in the past I've actually ran faster when I was more conditioned to do that. But it did have a noticeable feel that I wasn't used to. All right, well, if you don't notice, my clothes have changed because my battery died in my camera. And while the camera was charging, I decided to go on another run with the pup. Uh, and I just look forward to it. I did another two and a half miles. Again, I'm, I'm not a runner per se. It's just that when you have a product that you are proud to own and really do enjoy, it really motivates you to get out there. I mean, I have it like my weighted vest, this paddleboard above my head that I'll review at some point. It's good to be proud of the things you own, which is why I spend so much time researching before making a purchase. I looked at the Carbon X's for the longest time, and I looked at Hoka as a company for the longest time before pulling the trigger because $180 is no small fee for something. And I don't even necessarily recommend the Carbon X's specifically. It just pretty much any. I tried the Rincons. I tried their Clifton's. I think the Bondies were another one that um, were recommended, but I didn't try. Once I put on the Carbon X's, I pretty much fell in love running on the treadmill at the running store. So I pulled the trigger and made the purchase. Uh, again, hope this was informative. Leave a comment, please. I love interacting. Like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions of anything else that I should look into in the fitness and outdoor activity realm or you'd like to get my thoughts on something, I would love to do it if the time can be afforded and, and I could afford it. Go do some awesome. Peace.